What's up everybody, Andy here, and welcome back to Kit Guru. Since it's almost impossible to get your hands on certain computer components currently, your best bet may actually be to buy from a PC builder and get yourself a pre-built system. If you're in the market for a high-end gaming PC, then you're in luck, because today we're checking out CyberPower's Ultra 9 XT system, coming in at £2,795, and it now comes with a five-year limited warranty too. But before we start today's video, please smash that subscribe button and like this video if you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru, because it really helps us out. Of course, in an ideal 2021, we'd love to be building ourselves, but since graphics cards are like gold dust currently, it's not exactly ideal. On the other hand, there's plenty of gamers that don't want the hassle of building themselves, whether they don't have the time or don't want to commit to learning how to build their first PC and potentially deal with RMAs. For those that want a quick and often painless PC upgrade experience, buying a pre-built system is actually the way to go. Even for me, as someone that always builds their own PCs, I've recently recently resorted to buying two pre-built systems as I couldn't find the parts that I actually wanted to use, so there you go. The first thing I want to touch on is how the system arrived. Well, I was surprised when it came only in the case box. I usually find pre-builts are within the case box and then placed inside another super large shipping box with loads of padding and all that good stuff, but that just wasn't the case here. The other thing to note was finding the power cable wrapped inside a plastic bag and placed inside the system. Yep, you heard me right. This cable was actually placed above the graphics card before the support foam had been put in. Personally, I'd be worried about receiving a system like this in fear of any damage during transit. I aired my concerns with them, but CyberPower are confident enough that nothing will go wrong, and as such, they are offering that five years limited warranty. What do you guys think of this? Would you be happy to receive a nearly £3,000 system like this? Let us know down in the comments. Okay, let's crack on. Let's go through the specifications of this £2,795 build. We have a Corsair 4000D OEM case with no fans included. And because of that, we have six 120 millimeter CyberPower Black PWM fans. We have an Asus Tough B550 Plus motherboard. The CPU is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a 12 core. It's at 3.7 gigahertz with a 4.8 gigahertz turbo. The GPU is a 16 gigabyte AMD RX 6800 XT, which is the MSI Gaming X Trio. RAM wise, we have Corsair Vengeance LPX 32 gigabytes, which is four times eight gigabytes at 3600 megahertz RAM. PSU is the Corsair RM850X, the 850 watt 80 plus gold modular power supply. CPU cooler is the Cooler Master Lite 360. Storage wise, we have a 500 gigabyte Seagate Fire Cuda 520 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD and a four terabyte Seagate HDD. Lastly, shipping is free within the UK and it comes with that that five years limited warranty that I keep banging on about. On paper, this is a seriously tasty looking system. Component pairings are actually excellent here for a high-end gaming system. But of course, as always, we will be putting it through its paces later on via our testing, so stick around. Despite the huge tinted glass panel on the front of our Corsair 4000D case, we actually have a pretty stealthy system here, thanks to the six black fans, with the only RGB being on the side of the MSI 6800 XT graphics card and on the Cooler Master Lite cooler. Now, personally, I actually quite like the very minimal RGB setup. It's more understated, and those two RGB zones really pop out as well. Of course, you could turn these off for a totally stealthed out system as well. As the glass panel is tinted, you can't really see inside. So Leo reviewed this case last year, and this was one of his cons, but I would say for a stealthy system, it's actually a positive. Overall, Leo really liked the Corsair 4000D and gave it a really good score of eight out of 10. So make sure to check his review out too.
popping the panel off, we can see how tidy things are. Straight away, I notice there's no vast empty space within the case. This is a bit of a pet peeve of mine when there's loads of empty space inside a case. So this is mainly due to that large 360 radiator on the front and also the MSI Gaming X Trio graphics card is large as well. So as you can see, nothing is out of place with strangely colored components. Everything is black with the only tiny splash of color being the yellow accents on the Asus Tough motherboard. So super stealthy. Overall, the theme is consistent and I think it looks really good. There's also plenty of airflow within our case because we have those six 120 millimeter fans. Our six black fans are situated throughout the case with three being intake fans in front of our radiator. We have two exhausts on the top and another exhaust on the back. Now, one thing you may notice is the radiator at the front of the case with the pipes at the top. Now, I'm sure some of you at least will be slightly concerned here, but don't worry, don't worry. The pump is below the top of the radiator by a considerable amount, so the pump will remain wet, and that is pretty much what matters here. The potential downside to this is that air may accumulate at the top of the radiator, and as such could lead to a waterfall effect where the system cooling is kind of noisy. The other benefit of having the cooler at the front here too is for better access to the motherboard. If the radiator was at the top, then it may get in the way of the VRM heat sinks. Yes, the radiator at the front will prioritize cooling of the CPU and the GPU is getting hot air pushed onto it, so that is a slight negative. It's not a big issue really, especially because we have those three exhaust fans. So I asked Leo and Luke for their opinions on the radiator placement and they both agreed too. So I think CyberPower have made the right decision here with how they've configured this system. Overall, the inside of the build is actually super clean and very well cable managed and everything looks like it's been thought about and installed with care, but how does it look at the back? Taking the back panel off, we see the tidiness continues. The amount of zip ties used here is hard to count because they're just absolutely everywhere. Some people may not like this because it could be a hassle when you're gonna swap things out in the future, but in my opinion, most people buying pre-built systems probably aren't gonna be doing that anyway, and even so, it won't be for a very long time with these system specs anyway. Here's the moment you all been waiting for. Let's dive into some tests. So where possible, I've compared our results against the PC specialist Gladius i7 system that Luke reviewed last year. At the time of his review, the system cost £2,000 and the specs are an Intel Core i7-10700K, which is an eight core with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost of 5.1 gigahertz. It had 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM, 10 gigabyte Nvidia GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card, a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus PCIe NVMe SSD, and a Corsair RM750 watt power supply. Of course, our system has slightly more grunt with our 12 core Ryzen 9 CPU versus their eight core i7. And finally, not only do we have faster RAM, but we also have double the capacity with 32 gigabytes, 3600 megahertz versus 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz. So first off, let's look at CPU tests. Here we can see Cinebench R15 results for both multi-core and single core tests along with the results after one run compared to four runs. And as you can see, there's hardly any change at all after multiple runs, which is absolutely excellent. Cinebench R20 results are compared with that PC specialist system that I told you about. And as you can see, the CyberPower 5900X really wiped the floor with the i7-10700K's multi-core results. Even the single core performance pulls into a steady lead as well. Time taken to render our BMW CPU test within Blender 2.93 was 120 seconds, which is pretty quick, and what we'd want to see from our 12 core 5900X. PC Mark 10 shows how well the system performs at a variety of tasks and where it excels. Looking at our memory benchmarks, all also shows our system takes a strong win against that PC specialist system. But again, we have double the RAM with four times eight gigabyte sticks that are also faster. Crystal Dismark SSD results are what we expected, but they are slightly disappointing and I'll explain why in a second. So our 500 gigabyte Seagate Fire Cuda 520 drive is rated for 2,500 megabytes per second writes, 
but the one and two terabyte models are actually rated for up to 4,400 megabyte writes. So our drive is rated at a 5,000 megabytes per second read, which we have pretty much achieved here. And while we have scored 2,527 megabytes per second write speed, which is actually really good for this drive, we feel it's a bit on the slow side for 2021 standards. There are drives available now that are in excess of 6,000 megabytes per second writes, and we'd have loved to see something faster in this system. Synthetic GPU tests against the PC specialist system within 3D Mark Firestrike shows our cyber power system pulls in the lead overall. 3D Mark Time Spy is much closer, almost neck and neck, but our cyber power system takes the lead in all areas. So real world gaming examples I tested at both 1080p and 1440p with the highest presets available and I made sure to disable VSync as well. So Division 2 only dipped below 100 FPS 1% lows at 1440p, but on average hit 122 FPS and at 1080p hit up to 175 FPS average. Shadow of the Tomb Raider stays above 100 FPS even the 1% lows at 1440p and creeps very close to 200 FPS in 1080p. In Resident Evil 2 Remake, we hit an insane 333 FPS at 1080p and even 238 FPS in 1440p, and that's impressive. Doom Eternal almost has the exact same results as Resident Evil, 333 FPS at 1080p and 256 FPS at 1440p. Now some more demanding games, we have Gears of War 5 on the Ultra preset with variable rate shading disabled, which is more demanding, still achieved a great result here, staying well above 100 FPS in both resolutions. Finally, Dirt 5 also managed to get similar results to Gears 5, so as you can see, this machine is going to give excellent gaming performance. Lastly, let's look at temps, power, and noise. So CPU temps in comparison to the PC specialist system are ever so slightly higher at idle and gaming, but under high load, our 5900X actually stays slightly cooler than the i7 10700K. GPU-wise, our 6800 XT has a higher idle temp, but stays a fair amount cooler than the 3080 under load and when gaming. Noise wise, both systems are pretty much the same. However, our cyber power system is slightly louder by five decibels under load. Finally, power consumption shows our system demands more power than the PC specialist system, but not by a drastic amount. The Cyber Power Ultra 9 XT system we've reviewed has set specifications for this build. We haven't configured anything ourselves, so you can literally go straight to Cyber Power's website and get our exact specifications, but they will still need to build it for you. As CyberPower are system builders, you can change the specifications via their website system builder, and I found this to be super easy and intuitive to navigate. It also displays images of certain components like the case choices, fans, coolers, and more, rather than the kind of frustrating drop-down menus some other builders use. Of course, changing specs can increase the price, and choosing any pre-order items will also potentially delay your system's build times. The last thing I wanted to mention was stock and pricing. We're living in some crazy times currently, and as such, at the time of writing, I asked CyberPower how long lead times are from the point of order and whether or not you could expect delays because of the current shortages. They estimate up to 10 working days and many are shipped early. As for shortages, they currently are well stocked and all orders are on schedule. You can only expect delays if you change the configuration to a part that says pre-order. They also stated that getting more GPU and CPU stock is slowly becoming easier as well. So that's good news. If you order a system right now, you can expect it to be with you within 10 days or less. The not so good news is the pricing. So originally when I started writing this review, this system cost 2,599. However, the price has now increased to 2,795, which is almost 200 pounds more expensive. And that's in a really short amount of time as well. I questioned CyberPower about this pricing change and they informed me that it literally overnight, the pricing of the graphics cards and other components increased by an uncomfortable amount. And as such, they had to increase their prices to reflect the increase of cost. This increased in cost will apply to all system builders and isn't something CyberPower themselves could control 
but I did want to mention it. So overall, the system performed really well throughout our tests, and the only thing really letting it down is that Fire CUDA 520 SSD with those slightly slower write speeds than we would have liked. Since the read speeds were still excellent, paired with the FPS results from our gaming test, this system is definitely going to handle your gaming needs for quite some time. My experience with the system overall has definitely been positive, but of course, as mentioned at the start of the review, my main issue is with how the system actually arrived to me. The lack of packaging and the power cable being inside, uh, it's not something I'd be overly happy with myself if I was a paying customer, and if they improve this, then I would highly recommend this system. Of course, you do get that five-year limited warranty for peace of mind, but I'd rather the reassurance of better packaging on arrival. So what do you guys think of CyberPower's Ultra 9 XT system? Let us know down in the comments. Let us know as well if you normally build your own PCs, but you're looking at maybe buying a pre-built instead, like I've done. If you like this video, smash the like button, hit the subscribe, make sure to check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is KitGuru, I'll see you next time.